Hey, creative friends, it's Rebecca. And the other day when my son and I were playing around with this rub and buff um, on plastic, again, uh, last video, we used it on some keyboard keys. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And since I had this rub and buff out, I thought, you know, I've never tried this on leather before. I wonder if it would work on leather. So lo and behold, I think it's gonna work. I'm going to take this piece and turn it into a keychain and just do some, you know, carry it around for a few days and make sure that um, it's going to hold fast. This has not been treated with any post-treatment at all, um, uh, like Resoline or Super Sheen. I haven't put anything like that on it yet, so I'm just going to test it and make sure that this is a holding fast, but this has been drying for a day, and, and it's absolutely perfect. So this is just a scrap piece of leather that I had. So I love working with leather. I'm trying to get a lot of those older videos in their own playlist, so check that out if you're new to my channel. But um, I started with just a piece of um, natural vegetable tanned leather. Um, this particular piece came from my local local Tandy store and so it's just uh, it's the thinnest that you can usually find uh, two to three ounce I think is what they call it and so this is just a piece of natural tan vegetable tanned leather and I love using these watercolors on leather I've had great success with these so I mixed these two shades together and just did about two coats um, with that on the leather and let that dry and then came in with a dry brush it was actually an old toothbrush came with a dry brush and rubbed some of this uh, rub and buff a little bit goes a long way and so rub some of that on it and i i think that is just so pretty so i'm going to turn this into a keychain and uh, show you that final result and i think i'm going to even try to do some of the edging with the rub and buff because uh, i just think that looks looks so good on the on the edge too so Thanks so much. Just uh, keep watching for the final result. Okay, friends. Well, I'm trying some things uh, that I've never done before with this piece of leather. So first off, I've never done the laser uh, engraving and cutting on leather that's already been painted. So I'm curious to see, make sure that there's not going to be a whole lot of soot on here. And so... I have also, for that reason, done some masking tape, um, which I've never tried before with leather. So I'm just curious to see how this is going to turn out. And then the third thing I've never done is it's, I didn't get it wet at all. Usually I will come in and cut leather that's already been wet. So I ended up running this two times. Uh, my first time I had a 30% engraving power and it just didn't look very dark so I came in and bumped that up to 50% power and so it's much much darker now so I probably will have to clean up uh, this just a little bit um, so so I'm happy with that now here comes the ultimate test so this ended up running four times so I, it, uh, I know this edge right here has cut clear through so here comes the ultimate test to make sure that the product comes out fully cut. And so far, so good. Oh, hallelujah. All right, so a few little hairs just holding it in right there, but it managed to pull out. And then the next test are these holes. So these holes have cut cleanly through. So again, that was lasered four different times. This is my older CO2 laser. Um, still working great but uh, I had it at a hundred percent power almost a hundred percent power and about a hundred and 180 on the speed all right and so the next thing will be what does it look like after I peel off this masking tape so let me work on that and oh, here you can start to see a little bit there yeah it's looking pretty good so let me finish peeling this off, and that's very satisfying. Finish peeling this off, and then again, if I clean this up at all with water, I'll come back and show you. It can handle some water. I just uh, did not want to do it before I cut this time, just to see. But you know what? This soot 
it, it uh, you know, it's not coming off of my finger. Well, there it is a little bit. So yes, I am going to have to take this and to wash it in the water. All right. I've used watercolor and also some of that rub and buff to give it that gold, gold shimmer. Oh, I think it looks great. Let me go get this washed up. Okay, so here it's gotten washed off and it's still a little bit damp, but it, uh, but it's uh, looking great. So I'm going to get this uh, stitched up and then treat the edges again with the gold and see how that works. Oh, you guys, check this out. It's so stinking cute. So here's my little seahorse. And then on the other side, it says, take me to the sea. So I just love the colors. I may go invest in some more watercolor that's a little bit lighter blue, but otherwise I absolutely love this. And um, unfortunately, I don't have a gold key ring or brass color, but I can always add that in later. I went ahead and did like this moss color for the thread and I think that worked out perfect. And I'll tell you, I was really impressed with these edges. Um, it's so fun to take a um, one of these slickers to the edge. I got the edge a little bit wet with water and then took this over and over and over on the edge for quite a while. So they call it a slicker. Again, you can get this from the leather store or a different suppliers out there. Um, but it works to help uh, get all the fibers, you know, the edge of the, the leather, leather um, to get that edge nice and, and smooth. And it came out really smooth even before I went back in with some more edge treatment with the rub and buff. Um, but it, it feels nice. And I just love it. I think those colors came out really nice. All right, so I'm going to field test this for a while and make sure it holds up well. And then try these colors with some more leather products. So this was a success so far. Rub and Buff works great on leather. Thanks for watching.